Playman Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Finally, an actual teardown. If you remember a few years ago, and it's quite a few years ago, um, I got this gadget. I think it was an e-buyer thing. It was about seven years old we've had this. It's a long time and uh, apparently it stopped working. Um, which I'm not sure why it stopped working. We're going to have a look inside it. I did find a, a bunch of filament that looked like it had been pulled out the back because it was all still melty. So I kind of think that uh, might have been contributory to its failure because on most of these really, although you can wind them back, I wouldn't advise you wind them back out of the unit totally. I, I kind of think always feed filament forwards. But it does give us the opportunity to have a look inside and see how these things are constructed. And wow, I'm already, kind of impressed so looking at it you've got the heated end here the hot end and you've got the extruder there with the motor it's nice and simple and then the PCB underneath that's controlling the temperature that's your feed rate adjust and there's your forwards backwards um, what I'll try to do is see if we can pop this bit off um, and I might actually plug it in so we get some warmth through the thing just to, to get going because uh, I know we probably shouldn't do it while it's live, but I say while it's live, while we're in it, um, but it'll be okay. I think. Let's tell it to warm up for PLA while we're doing this. So it's quite cool though that it's lasted this long. I, I don't remember how much it was at the time, but it wasn't expensive. We're talking like just a few pounds, you know, maybe eight pounds or, oh no. Oh, I bro <laughs> broke that bit. Okay, that's not good. We'll have to uh, glue that on. So there's your hot end, and it's uh, it's quite cool, isn't it? It's got the heated uh, heating element there, and it's just wrapped in a little bit of insulation to stop this from melting. That works. That's fine. I guess there's uh, some vents here just to allow it to cool down. Brilliant. You can see through there if you look. A little bit of just like bus bars almost just going through. So they're coming from this side of the circuit to that end. So if I push the, oh, okay, 201 degrees it's saying it's set to. So we can hear all sorts of nasty sounds come in when we're winding that in and out. So one of the things we need to work out is how to get this back panel off because I kind of think we'll be able to see the top of the extruder mechanism if we get in there. So I'm gonna pop that off the power. And it looks to me like we should be able to slide in something thin and unclip that again it, hopefully it's not as fragile as the other clip oh hang on and it may well be actually I think it's an entire mechanism let's just undo this screw here so I wonder if these have um, improved over the years I'm not sure if it's a technology that has been continually developed or if they've just made these and stopped so it'd be quite fascinating to see what the state of the art is of these oh it's almost it's almost going wow so that's the tube you can see there's a bit of brand stuck in there and that's what I saw at the end very melty end like that pulled through so we'll just check maybe the old gear wheels are a bit gunky and there's the gear right there if we can Let's just hook this up enough to get this going. Okay. Come on, not hearing the motor going. Interestingly, looking at this, when you move that there, that slider adjustment is being transferred all the way there to that potentiometer. Okay, here we go. Okay, so when I push the push the motor, the extruder motor, look, see there? The gear wheel, if it will focus on there, the gear wheel itself is not actually twisting. Motor's going. Wheels not moving, so that's the, uh, oh, that's a shame really. That's, that's kind of like uh, something that we, uh, we we know is gonna be a real pain to fix. <laughs> Let's have a look. Very cute though. You, 
useful gadgets actually. I don't know if you uh, have one of these, but I find there's all manner of different uses. It's sort of sold as an arty thing, which probably for the most part is its best use. Um, look at all of those, there we go. Um, but I would say I, f I find engineering uses for it all the time. I think we have just the problem is a stripped gear. It's a tiny little stripped gear in the gearbox. I'll hook up the power. We'll be able to confirm. <laughs> the hot end is hot when it's not covered up. Who would have thunk it, eh? I like that it doesn't actually allow you to start moving this as well until it's heated up. That makes a lot of sense. Now I can hear it. Yeah, it's got like a PWM control. Darn it. I think it's uh, fit for the bin, unfortunately. But you can see in there, it's this gear here is stripped right there. That means it's game over, I'm afraid. It's a shame, really, because look, it's got a nice little bearing race. It was pulling it through properly. I mean, this is a good design. I mean, if it's possible I could probably find possibly find one of these but see that's just catching ever so occasionally down there's really nothing you can do about that at this point you can't really even assemble these because it's just a fixed type of unit really you could disassemble it <laughs> we could actually take it apart to get that out but I think finding that gear is going to be not worth the effort. So I think that's it. It's game over. Please comment uh, down below if you've got any suggestions what to do with this. I won't throw it in the bin right away. Um, and maybe we'll be able to get it working again. As ever, thanks for watching. Robots. Fighting robots. Come on, let's see your fighting robots. At hey. least, at least that'll be a positive. Tell me, what's this robot called? It's called Ultra Mega. Ultra Mega, that's good. And what's this fighting robot called? Fire Blamer. Fire Blamer, that's cool. And this one got that. That one is a really cool weapon. Is it? How does it go this way? No, no, the other. It goes this way, and then you press his wheel very hard, and and then it just flips. So we're going to play these robot battles, are we? Yeah. And Daddy, this one isn't very good. The Ultra Mega isn't very good at fighting. No. Because every time you press his one down, he, he half of him comes off, and it sh it's more like a bullet because it shoots. Wow! Ultra Mega and Fire Blamer, and what was the last one called? Uh, wait. Let me think. Oh yeah, I, I didn't tell you it. It was called. Uh, it's called Jump and Beam. Jumping Bean. <laughs> Jumping Bean, Fire Blamer and Ultra Mega. Yeah. Alright, place your votes now.